Before we start bringing forward our Select Series 4 environment into our organizational folder structure, it makes sense to go in and purge the folders where we can of files that were delivered. Even though we have to bring some of them back in later videos, it's nice to start clean so that as we bring things back you'll understand what they are and then can make a decision as to whether you want to use what's delivered or if you want to revise or a little bit of both. And so let's just go through these folders really quickly. Uh, the first thing that we're going to be doing is establishing our 2D and 3D seed files and after our seed files are done then we want to bring forth our line styles, our custom line styles. After our custom line styles are done then we will bring forth our feature definitions and begin to plug everything back in. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean everything out that we don't need uh, to be able to do those tasks. And so there's nothing I need in the cell folder structure so let's take those out for now. And remember we have a backup of this in the organizational folder structure Open Roads Training Imperial which we copied down. Into the DGN Lib folder structure we can remove our civil cells that are delivered for now. Our GINT color books we probably should leave to be able to utilize GINT that is required. Ashto, if you're not going to be using Ashto Design Standards 2011 you can go ahead and delete that if you've done your own uh, design horizontal vertical design standards. I'm going to assume that most of the agencies here may want to go ahead and use those and we also have a metric version and we have then display styles. This is something unique to the Open Roads Environment Connect Edition workspace. It adds a couple of additional styles. I would suggest leaving that. Then under feature definitions we have the basis here for uh, text favorites which is needed for annotations. We'll talk about another training series. We also have uh, text styles and dimensions that goes with favorites. We have our subsurface feature definitions which defines our pipes, head walls, those types of things. And then we have our feature definitions which is essentially what we're going to be uh, creating our own feature definitions. And this feature definitions file also stores all of our annotation groups for things like labeling, plan, profile, and cross-section views. And so uh, this is a very important file, but we're going to create our own scaled down version that just has our Select Series 4 features in it for now, and then we'll be adding to it later. And so I'm going to go ahead and take each of these files, knowing that we don't need any of this for right now, we're going to delete it, and like I said, we will bring things back as needed graphical terrain filters. Uh, we don't need that right now. We'll discuss that later. The graphical user interface file is goes along and I would suggest using this one. It enables the right click uh, view control and it works alongside with the uh, macros down here, the view set macro, so I would suggest leaving that alone. Then we have custom line styles and we're going to be starting with our own custom line styles so I'm going to go ahead and delete these for now and again we'll bring back later what we need. We don't have any link sets and sheet seeds are needed uh, to create our plan and profile sheets, our cross-section sheets. These will get created later in a learn course series dealing with sheet seed development so we can go ahead and delete those. The fonts that are delivered, uh, this is a new set of engineering true type fonts that have the engineering symbols. You may want to add to these or replace them, but they are distributable and there is copyright text information in there, but I would suggest leaving these. The macros that we deliver, you're going to need those, especially the view set. Uh, these others are for utilities. Uh, this one, for example, will enable you to rescale and resize, changing units resolution of a cell library and all the models. It's a very handy utility. Uh, this allows you to take levels and convert those into an element template input file. Uh, so we won't really be using these, but I would keep those around. This one is used directly with the uh, graphical user interface custom menu. So I would leave 
uh, the uh, macros in there. The materials, uh, from what I'm seeing, uh, most of the agencies are incorporating the materials that have been uh, delivered with Bentley Civil. These have been enhanced. Uh, additional materials have been added, so I would suggest leaving those. The PREFS folder and also under there the PREFS seed. These are the seed files that set up the interface, for example, the ribbon, the docking, explore settings, etc., even the function keys. And so these function keys are, are somewhat tied to the macro for the view set, and you'll be able to see that later. So you may want to update this uh, seed preferences for the function keys, but uh, for the most part, I would suggest leaving these intact. Nothing in the reports. If you have a new scales definition file, you certainly can provide that here. Uh, I'm going to leave this as the default for now. And the seed folder structure, we have a subfolder under that as well uh, for our drawing seed and our sheet seed, which is needed for a later learning course to develop our sheets. And so for now, we're just going to take that out. And then we have our 2D and 3D Imperial seed files delivered. Most of the agencies are, are going to not exactly mimic the working units here. However, I do want to leave these for now because what we're going to end up doing is establishing what working units are used for the agency in question and then update these seed files to use that particular agency's units of resolution. In other words, we're going to use these as the base seed files. There's a very specific reason, especially on the 2D file, that we want to do this because in the 2D file the views 1 through 8 are strategically arranged and the settings have been saved so that the right click view control functionality will produce proper results when opening combinations of views. And so there is a big advantage to using this new seed 2D file and then putting that your particular units of resolution in there. So we're going to leave these for now. The sheet borders, uh, we'll talk about that when we are getting ready for dealing with our sheets creation. And then we have uh, the super elevation. Again, if you're going to be working with the AASHTO 2011 standards, you can utilize what's done here with the super elevation. If you have your own super elevation that you want to import and create an XML file, you would put that in here. And then we have the delivered template library as well as what you would consider to be your template library. I'm going to leave this one because we will want to probably merge some things together eventually. And then if you have any widen files uh, for auto payment widening, those would go here. And these are delivered with a product, and so we'll at leave those in here uh, for simplicity for now. So essentially we have, by removing everything in this folder right here, we've removed all levels and all element templates all feature definitions and all annotations, annotation settings and groups from our workspace environment. So if we were to restart right now, we would be as clean as we can possibly get. And that's a good starting point to begin to put everything back together. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.